This is the SAP 6502 Homebrew CPU playing Apple II Pac-Man. It's based on the SAP-1 from Albert Paul Malvino and Ben Eater, and I've detailed the hardware build in another playlist. Unfortunately, a lot of CPU builds on the internet and YouTube gloss over the details of the microcoding. The purpose of this playlist is to take a very deep dive into the microcode behind the SAP-6502. Some of the details are specific to the 6502, but many of the concepts can be generalized to other microprocessors. We're about halfway through the playlist, and this video is on the load and transfer instructions. Next, we'll go over ALU operations, then we'll look at the branch and jump instructions. Stack operations are after that, and then we'll do some tidy up in the finale. I need to flesh out the instruction set, so I'm going to start with the LDA instruction. This is almost the opposite of STA. It takes a value in memory and puts it in the accumulator. One of the big differences, though, is that it affects the negative and zero flags. You might have also noticed that there's an additional addressing mode here, immediate mode. I'll go over that as well. Rather than adding one instruction at a time, I'd rather fully flesh out SAP 6502 cycles and program control ROM from a known good source. My spidey senses tell me that I'll probably introduce a bunch of bugs here if I do it one at a time. So, combined with that and some sheer laziness on my behalf, I decided to go and read the Apple Win emulator itself for all the opcodes and the associated function calls. I'm going to go to 6502H in Apple Win and cut out all the instructions from the main emulator loop. Next, I'll paste them into SAP 6502 cycles. Now, you might have noticed this number at the end of each case clause. It's the number of cycles this instruction takes and this is information I want. If I cut out all this code in the middle, I can just put in a return statement. Then SAP 6502 cycles will return a pre-curated value for the number of cycles per instruction. This is exactly what I want. They've also kindly pre-labeled all of the invalid instructions. For now, I'll just comment out all the instructions I haven't implemented yet. This does look like there are a lot of unimplemented instructions, but it's not quite as bad as it looks. Let's make sure I haven't broken something in the process. That still looks good. Next, I'm going to copy and paste all of these case clauses into the switch statement in Program Control ROM. Each case clause starts with an addressing mode which may be blank, and then the instruction execution portion itself. I need to modify all of these to match my own calling convention. Initially, I used fetch as the prefix for all addressing modes, and all the execution code had execute as a prefix. I need to convert what were macros in AppleWin to function calls. Clean up the instructions that don't use addressing modes. Then match all the fetch calling conventions to my own calling convention. I modified these manually, so I'll spare you all the details for all 256 instructions. That was a slightly long and laborious task. Next, I decided that I don't like using the term fetch because it's really part of decode. So I just did a global search and replace for the word fetch with the word decode. Hopefully, that won't do too much collateral damage. I'll just get rid of these legacy STA case clauses that I used in the past two videos. There are three addressing modes I haven't really addressed yet. Relative, indirect, and immediate. I'll leave relative and indirect for now, but I want to go over immediate mode. Immediate mode is relatively straightforward. The data is immediately after the instruction in main memory. All I need to do is transfer PCL to EAL and PCH to EAH. Once that's done, I need to increment the program counter to point to the next instruction in main memory. Now that I have a function call for each addressing mode, I need a function call for the execution portion of each instruction. I can manually cut and paste these out of the switch statement 
and then just clean them up a little. I also have to get rid of the duplicates. Next, I want them in alphabetical order, so I'll have to do this manually. But I'll do this behind the scenes. There was no trickery here, I just did it by hand. I'll re implement SDA. It's pretty straightforward, and it's just one micro instruction. Let's check again that I haven't seriously broken something. That looks good. Now we can start to make some progress. While I'm here, I'll just copy and paste this and make SDX and SDY. All I have to do is change the source register. Now let's get cracking with the LDA code. It's not quite as easy as doing a memory read into the A register. Remember that we update the negative and zero flags in the status register for this instruction, so we're going to need to run this information via the ALU. We do the main memory access and store the data in the B register. Then I'm going to tell the ALU to just transfer the B register to the output of the ALU and broadcast this on the W bus. I'm also going to tell the ALU to update the negative and zero flags. Finally, I want to end the instruction. With all that in place, I now need to update the ALU code to handle the negative and zero flags. Now, I could have done this a number of ways, and technically I should have done a mathematical function, but I'm going to be lazy and just use a lookup table. The first entry, and only the first entry, sets the zero flag. For values 1 through 127, neither 0 or negative is set, and then from 128 on, the negative flag is set. In the ALU code, in the instruction switch statement, I need to add a clause for ALU B reg. The code is pretty simple, I just make the result the value in the B register, but I also need to run the B register through the negative 0 lookup table. If the update NZ control line from the sequencer is asserted, then I update the negative and zero flags. I'll enable the instruction with an opcode of A9, which is the LDA immediate instruction. Let's see if that compiles. Hmm, that doesn't work. What's wrong? First, let's see if it's LDA immediate that's broken, or see if something else has gone wrong. Nope, it's LDA immediate that's the problem. What about other addressing modes? Let's see if LDA absolute works. Nope, looks like the LDA is the problem itself. You'll note that when I debug, I basically try to isolate down the exact piece of code that's causing an issue. What about zero page? That's even worse. I'll do a visual inspection of the code to see if I can spot the problem. Ah, this is the issue. I've done a boolean or here by accident. Let me just fix that and see if it works. Ah, much better. Now I can use LDA as a prototype for LDX and LDY. I just need to change the location of the destination register. Now that's pretty straightforward. I'll get rid of this temporary debug code and give it a bit more of a stress test. I'll try the LDA and SDA instruction at once. And while I'm at it, I may as well turn on every different addressing mode. Compile it and see how we go. Ah, that looks good. My debug plan is basically to get Pac-Man working. And once that's going, try out a whole bunch of other different games. I think there is actually a test suite out there for every single 6502 instruction. If anyone knows a good one, leave it in the comments. I should be able to use this LDA code as a template for all other transfer instructions. These all update the negative and zero flags, and now that I'm confident that they work, I'll give the other transfer instructions a try. These are TAX, TAY, TSX, TXA, and TYA. I'll quickly reformat the TXS instruction. 
Make sure I actually remember to enable them. Compile these. Hopefully it's starting to become obvious why I've written the code this way. For many instructions, I can just make a prototype, then cut and paste it for everything else. I just need to make small modifications as I go along. Well, that's it for this video. I'll see if I can apply the same strategy in the next video. I'll start working on the arithmetic and logic instructions. But don't forget to like, share and subscribe.